In this video, we're going to go over the arrow tool. The arrow tool is the first and the most used of all the mouse tools. They're located in this area on the toolbar right here. And you can access these tools using the sequential keyboard shortcut starting with one on the main part of your keyboard. So if I hit one, it selects the arrow tool. If I hit two, it selects this range tool and so on down the line. We're going to focus on the arrow tool for this video. The very first thing that you probably have already figured out is that you can use the arrow tool to move. If you have snap disabled like this, then you can move and position an event, an audio event, or an instrument event anywhere you want in the timeline. If you turn snap on, then it will snap to the grid increment. You can also do track to track moves. I just grab anywhere on the event and drag it and it will create a new track, or I can drag it from one track to another. If I drag it in a vertical dimension, for the most part, it will drop in in sync to where you left it. Even with snap turned on, you'll see I can pull this down here, wiggle it a bit, and it will still mostly stay in line with where it started, unless I get too aggressive with that, and then it will pop free. That's called constrained dragging. It makes it easy to keep things lined up when you drag from track to track. Now. The arrow tool can also be used to resize events. If you hover the arrow tool right at the edge of the event, it converts to a sizing tool. Then you can drag the edge of the event to effectively trim or resize the event. If you have snap enabled, resizing will also snap to the quantize grid. And you can see it works the same way on the back edge of the event as well. Now, also related to sizing is a dual sizing. This is a new feature in version 2. I'm going to use the split tool and just split this right in half and also turn off snap and go back to the arrow tool. Now, if I go to the top part of one of these events and select, you'll see that I get a resize tool. This allows me to resize one of the events. I'll just undo that. But if I go to the bottom area, it turns into a dual sizing tool. So now I can actually move the position of that split anywhere I'd like. This is really, really helpful when you're trying to position a split just before a drum beat. You can zoom in like this, grab right here, and we're actually resizing both events at the same time. And that allows us to put the events end to end right at the transient if that's what we want to do. So if I put another one right here, I can then Go back to the arrow tool and resize it. This is new behavior in version 2. So if I position the tool in the top two-thirds of the height of the audio event, then I can select either the left or the right event to resize. But if I position the tool in the lower third of the audio event, I get the dual sizing tool. Now there's another way to resize where we actually stretch the audio. The audio will be stretched based on the track setting. Currently, if I go into the inspector, we'll see that we have time stretch turned on and it's in drums mode. That's appropriate since this is a drum part. But if we want to stretch that, maybe make it twice as fast. If I go to the right edge of the event and hold down option, it gives me a stretch tool. Now if I drag, I'm actually resizing and stretching the audio. This is making it faster and shorter. Let me undo that and to put snap on so I actually snap it to the measure there. Now when I play back, it'll be twice as fast. On the other hand, let me undo that. If I grab it and stretch it the other way, I can stretch it from two measures out to four. Certainly a little audio degradation when you stretch it out. It sounds really good when you go a little bit faster, but that stretching option is always available by holding down Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC. We can also fade in and fade out using the fade flag. This is called a fade flag. I would sometimes call this a handle, but in Studio One, this is called a flag, this little triangle. And so as we drag it, we can adjust the fade out. You can see if we play that, it will fade out. And then this box right here will adjust the shape of the fade out. You can see it goes from exponential to logarithmic. So if you want a really abrupt exponential fade out, it would be like this. Or if you want a more gradual logarithmic fade out, you can do that as well. Control Z or Command Z on a Mac to undo that. We also have the same fade flag at the front edge of each event. We can adjust the shape of the fade and how long it takes to fade in. Great, great feature. 
Now, what if you have two events and you want to do a crossfade? So let's just take a look at crossfading. I'm going to put a, another split. I'll turn snap off here. Put a split right here. Then I want to crossfade from one of these to the other. I'll go back to the arrow tool. And I'll just drag this across from one to the next. So basically, I just drag so that I have the events overlapping. Select the first and the last one and hit X. That's how you create a crossfade. Now we could adjust the crossfade if we go right in the middle. You can see we've got this finger and we've got the hand. So if we use the hand, we can actually position where this crossfade is. This is a great new behavior of crossfades. If we go up here to this box, this is the shaping box for the fades, then we can adjust that fade shape. We can also adjust the crossfade handles right here, go back to the hand and position this crossfade any way we would like. Really great control that we have over crossfades in Studio One version 2. I'm going to split this into a few different sections to show you some operations with multiple events. So I'll select the split tool. I'll go back to snap. I'm just going to cut these in a few different positions here. So now I've got four different events. Now, if I select them all, I'm just going to go back to the arrow tool. You can do a multiple selection with the arrow tool by just dragging over a bunch of events. You can also use shift to include or exclude different things from your selection. So now that I've selected all, if I want to turn this one off from the selection, just hold shift and click it again. Now, if I drag the fade flag, you'll see that all of these fade together. So it's kind of a cool way to work for certain kinds of editing. Now, in addition to fades, we can actually adjust the gain of each event. And you click on the event, and there is a gain box right here. We can pull this down to reduce the gain, or we can push it up to actually add gain. And that allows us to kind of adjust the level of one event. It's a nice way to quickly balance out your levels from one event to the next. So say you have one of these drum hits that's a little too loud. You can come in here with the split tool and just isolate it and then go back to the arrow tool and now we can just adjust the level. We can make that hit a little louder or a little softer. Great way to work. I do this sort of thing all the time. Now there's a few tricks with the arrow tool. One is to locate the cursor. As you know, you can locate the cursor by clicking in the timeline. And if you have the option turned on, you can click in the background here as well to locate the cursor, which is really nice. But if you want to locate the cursor to wherever you're pointing, then there's a shortcut for that. And that shortcut is Command Spacebar on a Mac or Control Spacebar on the PC. So basically it's point to where you want it to position the cursor and then press that keyboard shortcut combination. I'm on a Mac, I'll press Command Spacebar. You see it brings my cursor right there. I use it to align to transients in many different situations. You can see that in version 2, we also can tab to transients, which really speeds that up. Another thing I like to do is split at the cursor location. We can do that with Alt-X on a PC or Option-X on a Mac. You can also find this on the Edit menu. Split at cursor. You can see here it's Option-X. So basically, I position the cursor here. Now, without clicking at all, I can just do Option-X, and you can see I put my split in. So it's another way to edit. You can use these two commands. Say we want to go right here and split out on this transient. I just kind of point right where I want to go. Command space, option X. So that's a way to position the cursor accurately and make a split without using any mouse clicks. I also want to point out that most of the keyboard modifiers for the arrow tools you can see in the info view. So we open info view with this question mark. So I'll click it right now. Then as we hover the mouse, it gives us an idea of what we can do to modify the mouse with keyboard commands to do all these different actions. So you don't necessarily have to remember them all. Now one I want to point out is just above here called Slip Edit. You can see on the Mac it's Option Command. On the PC that would be Alt Control. If you hold those down then you can actually slip the, the audio clip inside of the event. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to hold down Option and Command, and then I get this slip cursor. Now as I drag, I can reframe the audio waveform inside the event. One situation where you might want to use slip editing is if you're going to chop up a drum beat. So I'm going to just split this up on the grid increments and then do some adjustments using slip editing. 
So the way I do this is so simple. I just select the increment by setting it in the quantize, and that sets up my grid. Right click and do split at grid. Now I've got splits at all the grid locations. Now if I zoom in a little bit more, you can see that this one is way off. I can adjust this using slip editing. So I select one event and then hold down Option Command on the Mac or Control Alt on the PC, and now I can slip that within that event. And I can do that for all these, and it will actually adjust the timing to perfectly match the grid. So it's kind of an interesting way to work, and one use for slip editing. So you can see that that's a little bit, little bit off there, and I can just quickly go through all of these events and adjust them with slip editing in this way. And if I play back, So that's an example of slip editing using the arrow tool. And with that, we've covered all the different ways we can use the arrow tool for audio editing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.